So the results we're in, we're going to break down and look at my biologic age and how that corroborates with my chronologic age. As many of you know, we all age a little bit differently. Some people look to be 50 and they're only 42. Some people look 42 and they're 55. And the differences there have to do with a lot of different changes within epigenetics, which I will define shortly, as well as biologic aging and the pace of aging. And we're going to focus on this test, and I'm not being paid to talk about this. I paid full retail for this kit from True Diagnostics. We do have an affiliate code. We make a small percentage if you decide to do this test yourself, which I think is quite interesting. There's a website by Brian Johnson put this out. I think it's like agingolympics.com or something. I'll put it in the link below that looks at the Dunedin pace of aging. And this is modifiable. As many of you know, the Dunedin study, which was a 40-year study that looked at how people, how people's diet and lifestyle and mindset impact their pace of aging over the course of 40 years. We talked about facial aging uh, before. We I'll share with you links in the cards, uh, other videos where we've talked about this amazing follow-up study called the Dunedin study. And they have a, a biomarker, uh, an algorithm called the Dunedin pace of aging. Uh, and that's known as the Dunin Poam Report. And this has to do with the methylation uh, status within our epigenomes, which I will define shortly. And, and as we're going through this, we'll cut to some B-roll and stuff of me actually doing this test, and I'll share with you my reports. And so what, what, I, what I think is interesting, if you look at this Aging Olympics, Brian Johnson, or there's some other people, Sim Lond is there. Uh, most of these people have a, a pace of aging around 0 0.65, 0 0.63. Mine was 0.79. And I would just say, you know, I live a pretty normal life. Yes, we eat organic food, we exercise. I'm mindful about circadian rhythm disruption and sleep, but you know, we go and get ice cream every couple of weeks with my daughter. Uh, we're, I'm not super picky about my diet. Some, sometimes I go to bed at midnight. You know, I was just you know, there was the meteor shower. I was up till four in the morning. You know, the other night. So uh, I live eat healthy foods, but honestly, my sleep is not all that great. Uh, but I go in the sauna, exercise, and so forth. And so my pace of aging value is 0.79 which means that you know, on average, if people are aging chronologically one year per calendar year, their, their biologic aging is on pace, then when they're 45, they're gonna look 45. So I, I'm aging a little bit slower than my counterparts, which I think is, is quite interesting. Um, the other parameters that they, that they also look at were the omics, as, and some, somehow it, it estimated um, my physical fitness parameters through this test, which I don't know how they did that. And I, I've done my VO2 max and I'll share with you guys that before. Um, my, my VO2 max was 49 or 50 and it keeps getting better and better. Uh, but per this report, it suggested that my VO2 max was significantly lower than it really is. I don't know how they uh, did that. They said my VO2 max was estimated to be 44. Uh, it's significantly higher than that. So I, I'm taking this with a grain of salt. And we recently had Matt Kirbeline on the podcast. He says these are for entertainment value only. So I, I don't know. I, I think it is interesting. I think the Dunedin pace of aging, the methylation profile is important. Uh, the other ones, the telomere report. I know there's some controversy about telomeres, whether or not you're looking at the super, the critically short telomeres and the percentage of that versus other ones. But according to my telomere report, I'm 47. Um, which I don't, as I mentioned, I mean, I don't hold a lot of, of value in the telomere attrition report because I've spoken with many people on that and they uh, talk more about how there's different assays on that that are, that are uh, important to follow. But what I think was interesting is the system methylation proxy of heterogeneous organ years. And this is really interesting. So some people's organs are aging at a different rate. And so this is, again, looking at methylation. And what I think was interesting about this is my organs, according to this report, are 37, while my chronologic age is 42. Uh, for whatever reason, it says my immune system age is 44, and my hormone age is 45. I don't know how it's able to figure that out, but my heart age is 36, my liver age is 38, uh, my musculoskeletal age is 40, my blood age is 41, my lung age is 32. So I'm not sure how it's able to figure that out, but it does look at the immune system, and I think that is, is quite interesting. So uh, your immune system is really important, as many of you know, for all aspects of health, but uh, also your aging profile as well. Uh, because your immune cells can become senescent. And so it does look at the ratios of T lymphocytes to B lymphocytes and macrophages and natural killer cells and all this. And I think this is uh, just incredibly fascinating stuff here. And I, I don't know what to make of all this, but my CD4 to CD8 ratio is one and the average is 2.5. Reference range is one to four. 
Again, I'm not really sure to what to make of that. Uh, it talks about the neutrophil to lymphocyte ratio, and mine was 3.4. Uh, the median is 1.7. And this could be, I believe I got COVID recently. Uh, by recently, I'm, I mean the, about three weeks before this. And so that could be part of this, maybe some immune exhaustion, uh, I was traveling, coming back from Europe. And, and I, I did feel like uh, quite tired for a couple of weeks. I still did my normal activities, but I think that, you know, the neutrophil to lymphocyte ratios can change over time. I've seen this on blood work all the time. So maybe uh, that's part of it, but I think it is just important that we understand that our immune system is really important. And they talk about aspects that can affect your naive and memory uh, T cells, alcohol, caffeine, uh, as well as exercise. And so you want to minimize caffeine and alcohol consumption and improve your sleep and exercise. And that can affect your immune cells and the age of your immune cells. Um, but I think the most important proxy here, and many other people agree with this, is the Dunedin pace of aging methylation profile. And this was 0.79. So now that I know this information, uh, what I'm going to do is just really be mindful about when I go to bed and minimizing circadian rhythm disruption before bed lights, screens, and all that. I'm, I've been guilty of that for a lot of years. Even though I know this stuff, sometimes it's hard. I, I check emails or I'm editing videos or making thumbnails or whatever the, th the case may be uh, before bed. And so I'm going to be more mindful of that to see if I can get this down a little bit. And just to see what aspect of your lifestyle uh, can you manipulate to change these different variables. And so I would love to know what you think about this. It's, I think, quite fascinating. But as I mentioned, Matt Caberline, what he talks a lot about is just f your facial age. Uh, and there's different uh, technologies that are out there to ascertain that. And, and he's of the belief that that is the most important uh, or most reliable uh, proxy of aging. So it turns out that eating meat and going in the sauna, lifting weights and spending time in the sun is helping to slow down my pace of aging. It's 0.79 compared to most people are around 1 to 1.2. So anyway, um, thanks for tuning in. Hopefully you got some value from this. And if, you, if you've tested your own uh, biologic age through true diagnostics, I would love to know what your uh, pace of aging is based upon the Dunedin POAM score. Let me know in the comment section below, friends. I appreciate you tuning all the way through and we'll catch you in a future video down the road.